Monte or anything like that. No. She took a placement test for the community college, which basically just said what level of classes what she could start. General knowledge, and it was easy. Yes. Okay. And she can go, um, when we finish talking, I'll have her, she can go more into depth if you want to ask about that. Because um, it's really, that's one of the typical questions is, are your kids ever going to go anywhere after <laughs> traveling about? Um, okay. So let me ask, Christy, do you want to um, address, do you, do you, have your kids ever used any kind of what we would consider like stereotypical curriculum, books, worksheets, anything like that, taking any classes, and do you choose it or would they choose it? We, we have used some, but it is of their choosing, um, whether, you know, they're, they're interested in it. Um, so there's nothing, any, you know, there's nothing that's forced um, as far as, like, we're going to sit down and do this X, Y, Z, and um, so if we use any curriculum, it's because they want to use it and not because I've chosen it, so. Um, I'll share a little bit about us. Um, my, our typical day before we rode school, um, and we've been on the road two and a half years, uh, we had park days once a week in our community back home in California, um, Girl Scout Troop 4-H. Uh, she's taken hockey and ice skating and fencing and gymnastics and horseback riding and uh, endless amounts of classes and things um, that were of her choosing or kind of the definition I read earlier where presented information that was out there in the community to say, hey, you know what, seems like you like animals, maybe you'll try 4-H. Seems like horses are kind of cool, maybe try horseback riding. Um, seems like you kind of like, you know, stuff on TV with sword fighting, maybe fencing is kind of cool. Um, stuff like that. When we rode school, um, I have to say it's a little different because we usually stay on Pacific Coast time, even when we're on the East Coast, and which is always kind of fun. And so we, um, my daughter and I typically sleep in very late in the morning. So my husband gets up early and works on East Coast time. And, uh, and then we get up in maybe mid-morning. That's why I was really glad this was changed to one. Because <laughs> 10 wasn't going to work for most of us. Um, and it kind of depends where we are. We do a lot, like what Nancy was saying, we do a lot of exploring of wherever we are. And we took a six month trip and focused on what turned out to be a civil rights kind of theme and tied in civil rights just in general with different parts of history. So the civil rights movement kind of led into the civil war, even though these are not all chronological, but um, which led into just a lot of interesting things. Uh, World War II, now we're really interested in the Holocaust and learning about that. And, um, so our typical day isn't really typical, it's just kind of whatever and wherever we are presents itself. And um, we have only used what I would call, you know, traditional curriculum if Molly asked for that. Um, she has some friends who have used math books and different things and sometimes she's asked to have that and, you know, we definitely, I would never say no for that and it, it comes and goes whether we have something or not. It's really up to her. So, um, okay, Nancy. Yes, yes, okay. Uh, when the kids were younger, we half-jokingly told people that we were on the Star Trek curriculum. <laughs> and we watched all of the series from beginning to end and all the movies and we would stop and pause and talk about all the stuff that was going on. And we, we did this with all kinds of TV shows and movies also. It would take us you know, four or five hours to get through an hour and a half movie. So we'd stop and talk about, okay, this is what was going on during history at this point. And do you understand what's going on between these people here? And you know, Star Trek, you get history and physics and geography and geology and all sorts of topics. And that was how we exposed our kids to all sorts of things. And Nancy, I know your boys are into robotics now. Is that something they were doing before as well, or? Um, no, and, and that's, this has taken me totally by surprise. Um, I, I never envisioned that I would be involved with robotics at all. Um, and yet my boys have always been very, very, very strong in math and science. That's always been something that they loved, um, even when they were back in grade one in school. You know, very strong in math and, and science, and so when I we got back to Boise, and shortly after we got here, uh, joined some kind of a homeschooling group, and they sent out an email with different things that were happening. Um, and one of them was somebody had said they were starting up a robotics club, and 
and so I talked with my boys and said, hey, there's this robotics club, what do you think? And that's where I think it gets into parents kind of suggesting and driving things, because when I brought this idea up, my boys said, well, no, we know nothing, we can't do it. And they literally said that, we know nothing about robots, so we can't join this club. And I said, well, I think that this club is kind of, that's what it's all about, is learning about robotics. And so they said, well, we'll go. But I mean, they were kind of nervous about going uh, because they thought that everybody else would know all this stuff and they'd be experts. And, and of course, Davy and Daryl knew nothing. And it turned out that everybody in the group knew nothing and they were all kind of learning together. And it's been really fun to watch. <laughs> 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 Because so so I suggested that they do this and they're like, well, we'll give it a try and it turned out that it was a good thing and um, And then It's not kind of taken over. Here's the, here's the little one that was, that was fighting with the big one. Anyway, um Yeah, the, the, the robotics has kind of driven everything they have gotten they've developed this absolute passion for the robotics They're involved with first robotics and I can't say enough good about this program uh, But it has been absolutely wonderful and it's been a real driving force in my boys life for the last few years and uh, A little plug here. We're so excited. We actually won the regional in Salt Lake City and so in two weeks We're going to the world finals wow. in Salt Lake in St. Louis, so we're very very excited about that getting prepared for St. Louis but it's been amazing to watch what has happened as a result of that because my son knew nothing and they needed somebody on the electronics team to wire the robot and he said sure I, you know, he didn't know which team he wanted to be on because the, the big team breaks into sub teams so they have an electronics team and a mechanical team and a, a programming team and they needed somebody for electronics and he said sure what the heck you know he knew nothing and then that encouraged him to want to delve more into electronics. And so that's when we found the uh, a tech center through the public schools here that offered an electronics class. And he said, yeah, I want to I wanna learn everything I can about electronics. And he's now actually looking at uh, electrical engineering as a major in college. And so, but again, a few years ago, when I first brought up the idea of the electronics, uh, they were like, no, we don't know anything about it, we can't do it. So I think that's where that idea of parenting comes in and you're looking at your kids and saying, you know, I think this might be something you'd be interested in. And, and it, it has worked so well for my sons and they have really become passionate and very knowledgeable and it's been really fun to see them kind of at the cutting edge of this technology and doing amazing things. Um, so one of the other things that we're often asked as unschoolers is, how do you know if your kids are learning? Do they do any testing? We're all in states that don't require that. So, you know, Greg, you want to start off first? And how, when someone asks you that, how do you know if your kids are learning anything if you're not testing them? And uh, it, it's hard to not come off sounding uh, rude, but basically I talk to them. <laughs> there you go. And I can tell that they're learning stuff. And we'll have these long discussions. I'll be starting to tell them something, and Zoe or Tegan will tell me more about it than I was about to tell them. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I think they know this. And so you were saying that since you needed to take a form, a test, in order to go into the community college, did you do any preparation for that, or how did you feel having to take a test for one of the first times? Right, that's a good question. Well. I did do a little bit of preparation just to look over a sample test and see, okay, this is what's going to be like. But honestly, there wasn't like a whole lot of effort needed. And what kind of things were on the test? It was, it was simple. It was just reading, writing, and math. And I found it kind of odd because the reading and writing were they seemed overly simple to me. <laughs> so basically, you weren't. Were you? Did you feel you were being tested at what you thought would be a college level, or was it? 
more. Of I wasn't really sure what sure. to expect. Okay. So it was just a picture to see what it was. And Christy, what if someone, same kind of thing, if someone asked you, how do you know if you, your kids have learned anything or know anything if you're not actually doing standardized testing? I think what Greg said was, was important that you, when you're talking to your child, you're in a relationship with your child, you know what they are into and what they're excited about and what they're talking to you about, then you're going to know what they're learning. You're going to know if they're not learning things at a certain time frame. Um, but if you're in a relationship with them, then you kind of know, you just know that um, what they need to focus on. And, and you can see, like, if there's an area that you know they're maybe skilled in or, or they have an interest in, um, to be able to push that and know it's not going to be frustrating for them. Um, but then there are areas that they're not quite ready for to learn that in that time frame. Perfect. And Nancy, can you answer for us? Um, it's kind of interesting since the three of us are teachers here. But does, yeah, really. it, does it, you know, some people I know have asked me, I don't know that I can really do it. I'm not a teacher. And so if, you know, can anybody unschool? Does it really take a special, you know, talent? Do you need to be a credentialed teacher? anything, mm -hmm. it's that kids learn. It's what kids do. Their brains are designed to make sense of the world around them. Uh, when I was teaching grade one for the first time, I was terrified. I had always taught older <coughs> kids, and I could teach kids to read better, but I didn't know how to teach kids to read. And another teacher, a friend of mine, said, Nancy, don't worry about it. Kids will learn in spite of their teacher. And I have seen that to be true over and over and over again. Kids learn, and what they really need is a supportive, challenging, stimulating environment. And if we provide that for our kids, they will learn. So as parents, we model. If we sit down during our downtime and we pick up a novel and start to read, well, that's exactly what our kids are going to want to do. Our kids are going to want to pick up a novel and start to read. If if mom and dad sit down and write letters, uh, the kids are going to want to write letters. And so as parents, we are modeling, we are driving that, and whatever it is that we are modeling is what our kids are going to be getting. And Grace, since you're the non-credential teacher up here, um, <laughs> do you have a input on that as well? I think that the main thing you need to run school is uh, the willingness to put in the effort. Because whether you, you know all the material ahead of time or not, what you really what's really important is that you're there to help your child and show them how to learn. Because you can't learn everything. So I think the most important thing you can teach your children is how to learn things. And um, I just say that when I, I know when I was getting my teaching credential and my master's, I mean, it seemed like one of the main... Sorry, I'm going to okay. interrupt you. That's okay. The management just came and wanted us to know that in the next one to two hours, we're going to be getting major wind gusts. There's actually windstorms going to be over the next couple of days, so if you've got awnings out, just not like you don't have to rush out of here because it's not right now, but within the next hour to 90 minutes, they're saying they're starting to come in. Uh, Sorry, I didn't mean to No, that's okay. Thank, thank you very much. Nancy, you're fine. You don't have to worry about it. You're <laughs> 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 Um, I know in my case, as I was saying, in my teaching credential program, a lot was about behavior management. Um, when, you, when you're working on your teaching credential, uh, especially when you're getting a multiple subject credential and working with elementary school kids, you're not taking years of this is what math is and this is how you teach math. This is history. This is what history is, how to teach history. It's a very general um, overview and because class sizes are so large now in public schools, uh, a lot of it is learning how to just handle a large classroom of very diverse learners. Um, so when somebody says they have their teaching credential, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're any better prepared to teach their own child and help them learn than someone who doesn't have a teaching credential or a master's. Um, so that should not be intimidating at all to anyone. And I know sometimes when, I, when I'm approached by people I can kind of tell they're already negative about homeschooling, when it's in particular maybe unschooling, and so I usually just go ahead and throw it out there, like, well, I have my credential and my master's, and they're like, oh, okay, you can do it, then it's fine. 
but in reality, that really that has nothing to do with it at all. And um, really, it's a love for your children and wanting to encourage them to love learning as well. So I'm sure you all have that already. Um, another question that a lot of us get asked is about screen time, and that's a family preference, obviously. But just kind of for curiosity's sake, I've thrown it out there to kind of ask if any how everybody feels about screen time. In other words, TV, internet handheld games, Xbox, that kind of thing, which I know on the road sometimes is an issue only because we can't get internet to work well. Um, but just kind of curious, since that's a question we get a lot, so if you notice, want to start Greg and kind of, is there any limits? And I mean, then I'll, we'll have Zoe answer it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I try not to do too much uh, playing with the game oh, for the kids. Yes. <laughs> no, we don't let it go. Okay. Is that we, true, we, Zoe? <laughs> kind of look in and ask what they're up to, but we don't know. That, that's definitely true. Okay. <laughs> I haven't actually been very into video games, but I spend hours and hours and hours on the computer. And I honestly need to because that is an amazing resource to find information about anything. And why limit that? Mm -hmm. uh, Christy, we do not limit. Um, We've actually found that when there was a period of time where we did limit when we were in a different mindset, and we found making that transition, there was a period of time where the um, the need or the want to to have screen time was very very strong, but over time that waned because they're in the freedom to do whatever you know they want to do with screens, with computers or iPad, TV, whatever. And um, it, it started evening out, it started just flowing naturally. Um, so it wasn't, it's not an issue at all as far as screen time goes. Um, a lot of times uh, the choice is really to be outside and playing, but, but if, if they want to be on the screen, then that's okay too. So. And Nancy, how about with your kids, about limiting screen time, I, media? I will admit that it's a concern for me. Okay. Um, not that there's anything wrong with the screen time. Uh, we don't have TV in the house, but we do have computers. Uh, and I, I think that there's a there, there, there needs to be a balance. I think that there's nothing wrong with the screen time, but there can be a problem with the other things that they don't do because of being in front of a screen. We don't limit it. Um, and one of my sons isn't on the computer much, and when he is, he's kind of researching about robots and other teams and all that kind of stuff. The other one is more into gaming, and and, and I, and he doesn't, but he's also involved with a lot of other things as well. I mean, he does, he's chose, chosen to be in school full time during the day, he's chosen to be on the robotics team, so he, he's got enough other activities that I don't really worry about it. Uh, I would like to see them out playing soccer in the street, but the reality is that no kids are out in our neighborhood, which I think is a sad commentary on society anymore, that kids are not out and about. But what are his options, given the fact that there are no kids around us that are out that he can go and, and do things with? Uh, sure, he could go out and walk around the block on his own or whatever, but it's not the same as being out playing with other kids. So it is something that I'm concerned about to an extent. I would like for him to do other things, but honestly, I'm not sure exactly what those other things are. Okay. And um, one of the other things we were asked, it came up earlier, whether are you worried about your kids being able to actually go to college if they choose to, get a job if they choose to, because they have been in school. So, uh, Christy, you want to address that? Um, yeah, I, I have a different view on college, and it's kind of interesting because we sell the transcript programs <laughs> for, for college tra transcripts. But um, I really um, like to be able to leave it up to my children to decide if they want to go to college or not, because I want, want it to be theirs, you know, I want it to be their choice and 
Um, so right now, our son is not interested in college at all. Um, 